In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you. Now, the way we go through this podcast is we actually start out with an introductory portion where we talk about current events, our lives, we mention our sponsors. After that portion, then we get into answering the fitness and health questions. So the first part was about 41 minutes. Here's what went down in the entire episode. We start out by talking about this workout book. Uh, from India from the 1920s, and there's some incredible wisdom in it, and it came from somebody in our forum. Really, really cool. Then awesome. I talked about Organifi's new product, Balance. It's a probiotic packet that you add into your water and drink. And I also mentioned their other product called Move, which is a good anti natural anti-inflammatory product. I like them both. Of course, Organifi, one of our favorite supplement companies. All their products are organic. Here's how you get the Mind Pump discount. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump for 20% off all of their products. Then we talked about the show called Upload on Amazon and then another show called Hollywood on Netflix. Apparently, they're both really, really good. We talked about 24-hour fitness and some of the guidelines that they put forward as they reopen. And then we also talked about homeschooling and how parents are now having thoughts about possibly homeschooling their kids after all of this is over. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person uh, wants to know about alcohol and how it affects weight training. Like, is it good? Is it bad? Should I drink? Should I not drink? So we talk all about alcohol and part of that conversation was talking about how to mitigate the negative effects of alcohol. One of the strategies was to not drink right before bed. And the other one was to use a product called z -Biotic. Now, z is a is a bacteria that was actually engineered to produce an enzyme that breaks down the negative byproducts of alcohol metabolism. So some of the negative byproducts of alcohol metabolism are what can cause you to feel so crappy the next day. z gets rid of that. It's actually extremely effective. We've all tested it ourselves, and they are one of our sponsors. And I'm telling you this much right now, try it for yourself. Drink a little bit, have some alcohol, mm. see how you feel the day after, it's no joke. This stuff is breakthrough. Okay? Legit works. Now, we have a discount for you. Go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get 10% off their three packs, six packs, 12 packs, so you get discounts on all of their products. The next question, this person's asking about our workout programs, MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Aesthetic, wants to know how to follow both of them. So we talk all about how to follow programs one after another. And then if you don't follow the programs, we give you advice on how you can create your own programs and move from one goal to another so your body doesn't plateau. The next question, this person says, hey, how can I turn the focus from uh, how I look to how I feel? In other words, they want to be motivated by feeling healthy, being healthy versus just their aesthetics of the reflection in the mirror. This is a very important transition, so we give our tips on that in that part of the episode. And then the last question, this person wants to know if they opened up our fridge and pantry, what would they see? Of course, they'd see food, but we got into specifics about the foods that we like very to eat specific on food. a regular basis. Also, this month, all month long, one of our best at-home workout programs, MAP Starter, is 50% off. Now, all you need for this program is a stability ball, and dumbbells, okay? Stability balls are phenomenal for teaching you and encouraging excellent form, mobility, and stability. You add dumbbells to that, you get a good muscle building routine. Even if you're advanced, you can follow a program like MAP Starter. It'll improve the way your body moves. When you go back to your normal routines, you should notice improvements in control, stability, and that'll lead to more plateau-free workouts. Again, the program's 50% off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapsstarter.com. That's M A P S S T A R T E R.com and use the code STARTER50. That's S T A R T E R 50, no space for the discount. Strata. You know what? Sometimes I love our forum. Yeah, <laughs> why? Our private forum. Sometimes I think it's annoying too. Sometimes with people on there, like, <laughs> come on, man, what are you doing? Dude, there's some gems in there. But but a lot of times there's way to sell our forum. Huh? I know. Yeah. Well, hey, by the way, it's on sale yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. But I do uh, I do appreciate um, a lot of stuff about the forum, and one of the things that I really really appreciate the most is that the I get introduced to articles and studies and stuff that I don't think I would have found, mm. which is one of the reasons why I follow so many groups on Facebook in the in the first place. It's just it's like crowdsourcing right. awesome information. 
And somebody posted on there a, and you know, I always talk about old time strongmen and old time bodybuilders and how they worked out, you know, back in the early 1900s or even late 1800s. And just for context, one of the reasons why, and this is for the audience, you guys didn't know this, I tell you guys this all the time. One of the reasons why I find those decades and eras so fascinating is because it was before steroids became yeah. widely used. They didn't have the technology we have now. They didn't have the equipment. They didn't have the training knowledge in terms of putting it all together, but they found things that really worked. Well, what you have is you have oftentimes, and this is what I found, because I, trust me, when I, ever since I got into this space as a kid, I have obsessively consumed information in regards to fitness and health and fat loss and especially muscle building. I mean, in the 90s, I subscribed to Muscle and Fitness, Flex Magazine, Iron, Iron Man, Muscle mm -hmm. Media 2000, Muscle Mag. I had books from, you know, Robert, Ken you know, Robert Kennedy wrote all these books. I had books from Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mike, Mike Menser. I mean, I read everything. I could actually, I'll take a picture list later and I'll, I'll post it on my story. You can see all these old, you know, muscle building books. And you read them all and you read a lot of the same information. And at some point, as I started getting older, I started saying, you know, a lot of this information is coming from people that maybe are not a lot like me. Like they're all genetically gifted and I'm, I don't necessarily consider myself genetically gifted. I'm, I'm more of a classic skinny kind of ectomorph guy. But one thing they all have in common, especially because this was the nineties when I started doing this, they're all like on a lot of anabolic steroids. Yeah. Do anabolic steroids change the muscle building signal in the body. Of course, you, mm -hmm. you take a lot of testosterone, you've got this loud hormonal signal telling you to build muscle. Could that potentially change your recommendations of what works and what doesn't work? And I thought it did. I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. This mm -hmm. was after being frustrated, by the way, for years of not seeing gains. Right. So I went in these, I, I started looking for old, old you know, muscle building wisdom. So like, I said to myself, I'm gonna find what they said about building muscle before steroids because those guys are more like me than the guys that i'm reading today are right it's pretty funny like how parallel uh my pursuits were in a different direction so it was more about the quality of movement and how you know th they were able to figure out how to move more effectively and to to produce you know uh more power and and explosive ability and and strength and so i really dove back into all these old forgotten techniques and, yes. and you know kettlebells and indian clubs and may spell like thing got us um and, and where various cultures had uh different techniques that they would bring in to prepare them for war and i was just very fascinated by that like how um you, you know back how they in, trained yeah how they trained that was so fascinating to me. oh i love same here so i so i get these old books and i start reading in them and, and what do i read i read some counter information like all the information I was reading in the 90s and, and you know, until I went and looked back said do body part split routines, hammer the crap out of your body, go to failure on everything. Like there was all that. That was all the, the information that I read. When I go back in these old books and these guys like John Grimmick, Steve Reeves, you know, all, you know, even Eugene Sandow way back, right? Way back before. And by the way, they were impressive as hell. Like, you know, John Grimmick had 19 inches. These, these guys were mostly natural or totally natural. Steroids. Were starting to get used in the 40s and 50s, but they were using doses that were like nothing compared to what they started using later on. And the doses really started taking off in the late 60s, 70s, and then they just didn't stop, right? So I read this stuff and I'm like, whoa, this is totally different. Let me apply this and see if it works. And sure enough, it does. So somebody in our forum knows I like talking about this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And they found a book called Muscle Control and Barbell Exercises from the 1920s from India. Wow. So this is India, right? So I, I saw this on the forum and blown away by the way the guys look. Oh, dude. I would argue they look better than the pictures I've seen of, of guys over here in the U.S. in the 20s. Oh, dude. They so look sick. A lot of people don't know this. India has a deep and rich physical, old physical fitness culture. Yeah. They have they, they were the ones that, that trained a lot with the like the the clubs and mm -hmm. the kettlebell and the, not the kettlebells but the the, the mace bells yeah gada they had a wrestling culture the great yeah. uh, the uh, great gama i think his name was was a wrestler from india who was undefeated for i don't know how many thousands of matches and you see these pictures of these heavily muscled like indian guys with the curly mustaches and all that stuff or whatever yeah so this guy posts this book and i'm i'm looking at it and i just and check out the first just the first paragraph and tell me if this is not remember this was in 1920 okay this is the first 
the very first paragraph, and it's underneath the title, General Instructions. It says, always try to coax and not force your muscles to grow. Excessive and rapid exercise is harmful. Avoid overexertion and go ahead slowly and intelligently. A few repetitions correctly performed is of more benefit than any number done in a clumsy way. I mean, how awesome. Dude, wisdom. Is it? Look at this one. Individual training is better than a class work than classwork in a gymnasium. I mean, yeah. isn't this incredible? Yeah. This is so simple food is best. You can eat whatever you can digest and remember that you should eat to live and not live to eat. Keep your stomach easy. I mean, it's such great, brilliant yeah. information. Just distilled all the way down to, you know, the elements. Oh, How, the why do you stuff. think it do you think it fell out of favor because we just assume as consumers that because time has passed that science has evolved, we're smarter today than we were in the 20s. The guys look more impressive, so there's your, you know, your example of yep. oh, it must have we we must know so much more, we must be so much further advanced, and the information that we're getting provided here in the 70s and 80s must just be way better than what was being provided in the 20s and 30s. Do you think that's what it is? What what I think what caused us to for us to to lose sight of that and then to buy into well, this? If you look at marketing, if you look at Steve Reeves and John Grimmick's routines that got them to champion level uh, bodybuilders, very strong muscular guys. If you want, pause the podcast, Google John Grimmick, take a look at his picture and tell me that's not impressive. And again, remember this was before the wide use of anabolic steroids. At most, the guy was using five milligrams of Dianabol a day, uh, probably not, maybe natural most of his career, and he looks incredibly impressive. Look up their routines. You know what it looks like? This is what it looks like. Three days a week, barbell squats, bench press, barbell rows, pull-ups, overhead press. So it looks basic. It doesn't look fancy, right? So I think part of it is after a while, you want to present like new and spectacular. Yeah, and you, Novelty. Novelty. You want to include all these machines. Mm -hmm. And then when you're on a lot of steroids – you know, here's the deal. When you lift weights, you there's an anabolic signal that gets sent. There's muscle protein. We can measure this with studies now, right? We can see that muscle protein synthesis spikes after 24, at, at about 24 to 72 hours, it starts to drop very quickly. But if you are on anabolic steroids, you get a signal that stays up all the time. So you can train your chest and beat the crap out of it and train it once a week for 20 sets mm -hmm. and you're okay. You're natural. You train it on Monday, even if it's sore for the whole week. You built muscle for two days, three days maybe, and then after that, stopped building muscle. Maybe started adapting in the reverse, and so now you go back to Monday and you're at the same place you were before. Well, and too, I think back then they were trying to put it all together for average people to even be involved in training. I think like selling them on the concept of even coming into the gym and improving yourself versus it, it sort of evolved into idol worship. Like like these guys that were just you know genetic freaks and and really like took it and or they may have been on anabolic steroids. You know that played a factor. Uh, their training was totally different. But we started to put them on magazines. We started to have posters of them and uh, we wanted to do what they were doing, not necessarily like look into what was best for my own training. It's interesting too, because uh, you know, it really makes me, I had a conversation yesterday with our good friend, Craig, and we were talking about, he was asking, uh, you know, what is, what is mind pump considered their avatar? I said, you know, there was something when we first moved into the space that we, we recognized right away was the the advertising, the marketing, and the the communication that was happening from uh, either academia or even the the fitness influencer was really targeting this this one percent to five percent of the people, which were not the people that we were training. So I feel like that's what kind of happened in that that bodybuilding era of the steroid era when it mm -hmm. popped out. It's like it's not that that information is awful or wrong. It developed some champions. It mm -hmm. developed some crazy amazing physiques, but. It really was speaking to a very small percentage of the population that were on anabolic steroids, that were training seven days a week, double days, and crazy amounts of lifting in their whole life, and they were genetic freaks, mm -hmm. right? So it's like this sliver of the of the uh, population, but yet they are being put on these pedestals, and they are getting the platform to speak to the masses on all about nutrition because they were what everybody was idolizing as, oh, they must have all the information. So it's really interesting when you think like, we still are suffering from that as a, as an industry. Totally. We still yeah. are the people that are leading the way and speaking about health and fitness and training are still talking to this very niche group. And you know, I think that was something that we noticed right away when we got into podcasting was when we looked at all the other 
people that were speaking about it, I go, you know what? Nobody is talking to the hundreds of clients that I've trained. Those those are those are your normal everyday people that have normal jobs and families, and their number one priority isn't the gym. It's everything else in their life, but they recognize that health and fitness is important and they're trying to find out how to integrate it and they're reading this shit in the magazines. Mm -hmm. and That's thinking, the frustrating part. They've right. come in with all this information that they've heard, but none of it applies to them. Right. And we'd have to like take our time explaining that, really educate them what actually would work best for them. Oh yeah. It's, uh, you know, I was on a, a podcast the other day and they were asking me about hit cardio and they're like, oh, the studies show that hit cardio burns more fat and this and that. I said, well, it depends on who's doing hit, and she said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, if I'm working with the overstressed, un, you know, poor sleeping, uh, out of shape, you know, average person, hit cardio is a, a terrible way." Which is the majority. Which is the majority. Right. And here, this was a big realization for me that really took me to the next level with my own personal training. When I realized that if you look at the, if you look at a scale, uh, and on one end of the scale was the worst possible you know, athletic muscle building ge genetics possible. Like you just terrible, terrible, terrible all genetics. And on the other end of the scale, you had the extreme mutant muscle building freaks who you probably see a picture of them as babies and they look like little bodybuilders. Most, the vast majority of us are somewhere in the middle. Very, very, very few people on are, are on the end, other ends of the spectrum. So I'll use another example, okay? Let's look at the, 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 the spectrum of height. Genetics are, yes, in nutrition, Definitely plays a role in how tall we get, but genetics plays a very big role as well. On one end of the spectrum, you have people who are super, super, super tiny and super, super, super small, right? On the other end, you have people who are like seven feet tall. Now, forget TV, forget media, forget, you know, articles you may read or, you know, NBA. Walk around, just walk around every day. Walk around, you know, think about your whole life of real life, not anything in media. How many people have you ever seen that are seven feet tall in life, in or, real life, or four feet tall, or or under four feet tall in real life, right? I can th I can yeah. literally think of twice a, cu a couple people. It's, yeah. That's how much it stuck out. So you're probably, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not on those extremes. So you should train your body according to the advice that works best for most people, which is what we try to communicate. And all that other extreme stuff, if you apply it to yourself, we know what's going to end up happening. Not only are you not going to progress, you're going to probably regress or, at worst, hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is the message that I, I think it's important to hey, communicate. I came in the other day and saw a box from Organifi with your name on it only. What the hell did you get? Oh, that yeah. Justin is Sal Weasley again? <laughs> he does. No, yeah, I think dude. he's. I think he's. <laughs> he's like, you know what, you guys, you could just direct it like specifically to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be great. No, they have um, a new product called Balance, and what, it's a pro. It? It's a probiotic. Oh, okay. It's a probiotic, and it comes in a, a powder. So you add it to your water and you drink it and I've been using it and it's good. You know, Organifi does such a good job with their products. You know what other one that I've started using recently that I haven't consistently used in the past? Do you, have you guys tried their Move? I have. Product? That's their joint yeah. support, right? So it's like joint support, anti-inflammatory. Was it turmeric and things like that? Yeah. yeah. So there are there are, uh, there are are compounds in Move that are, I actually have the bottle right here. Dude, Let me read it to you. I love that when I'm going back to my one to five uh, rep range. Mm. I, I tend to <laughs> I tend to use some of that to, to help with the achiness for sure. Yeah. So it's got turmeric. It's got Arctic pine. Uh, it has astaxanthin, uh, holy basil, all which can help, which just help regulate inflammation. And That's my favorite ingredient. Yeah. Which one? Holy basil. He's old. Now, <laughs> yeah. Doug, do you know if they're pro did this replace their old probiotic or is this an addition to it's just another way? Do you know? I think it's a replacement. Okay, so they got rid of the the old probiotic and then and then now so did they just move it to a powdered form? Is that what the deal is, or is it got something else in it than it's, the old it's one? Because I love taking the old one. It also has prebiotics in there as well, which are which are like oh, things that help feed the probiotics when you consume them. So I think it's a better product. Oh, yeah, I okay. think they improved upon. Uh, the old product, so that's that's the deal that's going on. You know, uh, I, I tell you what, Adam, it's, I, it's hard to look at you with your mustache. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little distracting, huh? <laughs> bro. Those are so. Hey, I just, we were talking uh, about genetics. I'm going to tell you right now, dude. Your mustache genetics put dude. you at the huh? at the extreme. I'm telling you, if you can grow it and then get some wax and kind of twist it a bit, like you'd be like an old school barber, like we'll one of those old strongman. I mean, guys. It's, it's so full. There's yeah. no, I can't. There's no daylight in between it, <laughs> and yeah, it covers. It's pretty your, bushy. It covers your whole lip. Yeah. 
Did yeah. you do that yourself or did you go yeah, yeah, see? Yeah, no, no, I did it myself. That's, I mean, I'm forced to, right? That's kind of what's been going on since I don't have, the reason why I, I'd prefer to have my, my beard right now, but I have somebody who does all that, that lines it all up. I can't do it myself. So you went with the stash? Yeah. yeah so, well, I, went to, I was like, you know, I, I need to shave. The beard was getting just out of control and it starts to bother me when it gets too long. You know, when it gets yeah. a little long, it starts to get itchy, you get food stuck dude, in look it. look at yeah, mine, I just yeah. don't. I'm letting it go now. Yeah. yeah, yeah it looks good all, though. I like Justin. Touchy. Justin's look right now with, I like your short hair with your short beard. Right yeah. It's actually like the same length. And so I was like, I shaved my head and then I shaved the beard thing and then I just let them grow together. So yeah. that, now how do you, work out. how do you grow? Cause all of us look a little different than before. I mean, I look different too. I haven't gotten a haircut in months. So I look whatever. And my beard's out of control and Justin's got his thing. And just, now, how are your girls responding to the new look? Honest. Uh, at first, like she was cool, but now it's it's kind of like, uh, you know what? Like I'm looking forward to when you have hair again. Like she said that multiple. <laughs> oh, really? Times. I yeah. like. See, I like. I like the look on you right now. Yeah, she's like. I, I would tell you if it was stupid. It's kind of chia pet like right now. You mm-hmm. know, like it, it's in that fuzz phase, which I I've never been a real fan of either because it's just kind of like a little. It turns into like a poof ball. You know. <laughs> Yeah. No, no. What about you, Adam? Katrina likes it, dude. She, she I, likes the stash. Well, I think she likes the the fantasy that she thinks she's sleeping with somebody different. That's, oh, what, I think, yeah. that's what I think it is. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I nice. Think, I think yeah. that's what she feels. You, you like. could be the stranger tonight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that's it's the. the so I get to hook up with the pervert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you just need a solid trench coat. Yeah, I yeah. Like. No, I rented one of those white vans the other day. Dude, we show up, <laughs> Magnum PI. That's your mustache. Oh yeah. Ma- put up, pull up Magnum PI. That is your mustache right now. So I tell you guys, my dad won a competition in Hawaii. Okay. To look like Magnum yeah, PI? he looks just just like him. So, so 90, 90% of our audience has no idea who that is. I know. It's, it, look it up. Magnum P.I. was a totally popular show on, on TV, I think, in the, Dude, he was well, the man. 80s and 90s. I, yeah. I sent a picture to my uh, client friend of mine, who and she she sent back a picture of, like I guess, a famous picture of Burt Reynolds in the 70s, where uh, he's, like, he's yeah. naked on a bear rug. Bro, you, Dude, have, was, you have a literal Magnum P.I. mustache. That was the look back in that era, for sure. I'm trying to bring it back right now. I'm trying Damn. to bring it back. If you, got, if you had the, the chest hair... Do you you, uh, you yeah. have to lie. Nah, not like that. You don't you need lie. a little chest hair curling up over your shirt. Yeah, yeah. dude. The other uh, day that was, was another part of it. The other day I was wrestling with my son, dude, and he had he had sweats on, you know. So I'm kind of holding him down, messing with him, whatever. And, I, and his sweats came up a little bit, and I'm like, "Damn, boy, your legs are hairy." The kid's <laughs> getting some hair on this body all of a sudden. I'm like, "Holy cow!" Do you remember being a, a young boy though, and not and you couldn't wait for that to happen? I remember girls teasing me because I didn't have very much oh, hair on my, my legs when I was a kid. You know, that yeah. just reminded me of like I wanted. I wanted like facial hair so bad for for a bit because like one of my best friends, every he, boy, does, he got right? it early. Yeah, he got in like sixth grade. Like I was like, oh my god, and like he was getting attention from girls and stuff because he looked all like mature. So I actually like experimented. I was getting like peach fuzz and stuff, you know. And so I, <laughs> I actually put some dirt on there. Oh, you <laughs> did, dude. I did. I put some dirt on my. This guy, of course, he did. This and is the guy like, hey. who uses a sharpie on his yeah. fucking head over. Here. <laughs> I, I tried it out. I walked in it a bit, and uh, people saw it right through. Yeah, it. So, Justin, so, Justin yeah. paints some mustache on his face. <laughs> yeah, and he it. jumps in a pool and it's all running. Yeah, it, it works. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I grew like uh, I, I grew first. So I remember out of all my cousins, I had I was I was the first one like armpit hair and the whole deal, you know. So, but then I just I they progressed and now I am like the least hairy Sicilian person I think on earth. If oh, I'm not so mistaken. you were early then? You were oh. early with facial hair and things. Like that. I was, oh, yeah, I, I was late with all that. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't grow. I couldn't grow a beard, a stash, any of the stuff till late. I was a late late bloomer. Yeah, so yeah. Started, and then even when it did, it was like all blotchy and you know, oh, I couldn't, it was the worst. Couldn't put it, a full beard in, dude. It was all patchy and it was all started on my neck. It was, it was the worst place. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no. You beard, don't want to grow all, that out. Yeah, yeah, no no just, beard, ugh. but all neck hair. Yeah. yeah. But, well, what you do when you're younger is once it starts to come in, you're so excited that you oh I got some face hair. That you start doing stupid stuff like the like what do they call it, the flavor saver, you know it goes right here. Hey, I like that, dude. Oh yeah, 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 yeah I, I like that for a while. I like that. Or the you know, of course, the '90s. What was the '90s facial hair things? The goatee, right? You gotta yeah. have the goatee or the, yeah, or just lo- the chin. I don't the like trail of tears. I've been this way since I was young. That I it, I don't normally have a haircut, a look that I keep for very long. Like I had a buddy. I remember like we were like in our late twenties, and he was still rocking that same bowl cut that we had when we were like in eighth grade. Wow. And I'm like, bro, change your fucking look up, dude. <laughs> And I and I'm I, I like working. I like to rotate through it. It just keeps it fresh. You know what I'm saying? It keeps yeah. it fresh and different. So I'm always changing things. That's, up. That's, did you guys ever dye your hair? Or anything? But, yeah, that's my, I did. I did for a while. Like, like how wild? Okay, so no, 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 not like that, dude. Yeah. So I so the the oh, no wild, the, the no BS program the the six pack the abs workout or whatever. We know we did that episode. Lots of people are getting it. 
and the videos in there are of me from 2014. Mm-hmm. But I also dyed my hair. Okay, I want everybody to know that I did not go from totally black <laughs> uh, yeah. to <laughs> just because that, that's what makes it look. Pepper. That's what makes it. I think we both look like we were fucking hell young. <laughs> yeah. but that makes you look a lot younger yeah. because you were dying. Because I got them. messages like, "Oh my gosh, what happened to your hair?" So like, <laughs> I, I dyed it back then. I yeah, was I was cool. doing that to maintain it for a while. But even before that, like I, I would go like a little punk rock. Like I went. Yeah, I would I would dye it uh, black, like jet black, and then also blonde and like bleach it out. But uh, that was as far as that I, I would didn't not go, like that, colors. That would not fly with my immigrant, you know, parents. Oh, my parents hated it. Oh, trust dude, me. My, yeah, no, I would have come home with with purple hair, and my dad would have. Yeah, I tried my, a mohawk, but they made me shave. I joked one time. I was I thought it was going to be funny, and I told my, my my I had a friend come over, and my friend had pierced ears, right? Yeah. And so he comes over and this and that, and I could see my dad's kind of looking. You know, he's an old Sicilian, right? So he's kind of. But my, you know, the, uh, I got I got to say this too about my parents: very accepting. If you're a good person, they don't care; they love you. But initially. He, they grew up a certain yeah. way, especially my dad. They're going to judge a little. So you walk in with you know colorful hair, piercings, whatever. Yeah. The, they're, at first, they're going to be like, huh? <laughs> so I could see my dad looking at this dude with you know hoop earrings or whatever. Yeah. So the kid leaves, and then you know, I, and, my, and my dad's like, oh, he's a nice kid, this and that. I said, yes, he, he, tomorrow he's going to take me to the place where he got his ears pierced. And my dad looks at me, and he wasn't even joking. He goes, if you do that, I'll pull him out with pliers. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just kidding, Dad. Yeah, yeah, joke, <laughs> say. It was a total joke. Uh, yeah, totally hey, I want. I got to bring up. Uh, so a, a bunch of people have been uh, messaging me about watching the show um, upload. So I, I watched it. So you oh, know, I watched it. Too. I love when I get recommendations, and uh, once I get enough from people, I go, okay, it's. It, I'll check it out. Um, definitely a, uh, what did Doug say? Like a candy show you referenced it as, you know, it's not like it's processed food TV. Yeah. Well, it's a little well, bit better than that. It's better than just straight trash TV. It's got a bit of plot to it, but yeah, it's just a fun show. Like, you know how you like the righteous gemstones? Yeah. It's kind of like it's on, you're having a good time. Cause the, the concept is really unique and I thought it's really playful the way that they uh, write it. Well, it gets, okay. So it, what I liked about it, and I think you would like this Sal, cause it gets my wheels spinning about what we currently do right now. It feels like it could be a potential reality. So the the concept without ruining the show is, you know, it's uh, it's called Upload. And the idea of what Upload is is that you upload consciousness to a virtual heaven, basically, mm-hmm. after you yeah. die. But, you but know... There's like upgrades inside it. Yeah, and we're not far from... We're not far from AI becoming this smart. And, and I think about people like what we do right now. I mean, think about the amount of, of words that are out there on Google that you have written or, or put on, whether it be Instagram or blogs, and then the amount of words that you have recorded on podcasts and YouTube. You know, just from five years that we've been doing this, you could probably build an AI that would respond just like one of us three would respond to almost any question. That's creepy. Isn't that the thing about that, yeah. that you could do that? So if they found, obviously, if the science was there to be able to, you know, keep your conscious alive and upload it into a database, and then you have all the algorithms for how this person would answer and respond, you would be able to create this kind of virtual version of them. So that's right. kind of the idea. And I think, man, that is not that far-fetched mm-hmm. with, if you have it's all It's like that. Sims, right? So you, so you become this digital person, and then you interact with other digital people that used to be, you know, real people. So it's like they, they catch them before they die, and they kind of upload them in. Yeah, I love that. You know, the only problem with that is that even all the stuff people say, do, search, that's recorded, people oftentimes don't even know themselves well enough to to put that stuff out. So the true selves of themselves right. would, may not even come out. Of course. Is I think it, I think that there, there's obviously... Uh, I got to just destroy that. Yeah. With, with, yeah. <laughs> no, I, it, it's interesting. I don't see it happening for like at all, but so, I think it's a, it's a cool concept. So I, I give it like a B minus, a C plus. I mean, that's where I'd be. But mm-hmm. what I'm loving right now that I passed on it a bunch of times to watch in the last, I think, whatever it's been up, a week or two or whatever... And I finally uh, indulged last night and really was surprised and impressed was the show Hollywood on Netflix. Mm. Mm. Hella good. Is it really? Hella good. And it's the, it's the series? Yeah, it's a series. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Netflix series. And I, I forget what episode. I, I went through a few of them last night. Uh, and they and they just keep getting better. Uh, it just and I wasn't interested in the preview. The preview didn't sell me, and I was like, ah. Eh. And then after a while, the rankings up there. I see enough people saying, "Oh, you should check it out." I finally go watch it, and uh, right away, the first episode, I was it was like, "Okay, this is not what I thought it was. This is really good." So, hmm. uh, probably one of my favorite recommendations. Hi, okay, good. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll ch- I've passed through it. I yeah. passed over it so many times. Yeah, yeah, check it out. I'll Ooh. make sure to check it. You know, yeah. back to the the whole uploading your consciousness. 
this here's an interesting uh, philosophical question, right? Let's say that we had the technology where we could literally take your brain and copy it exactly to create to to transfer your consciousness into a digital form. Right. Is that really you, or is it just a perfect copy no. of you? Well, yeah, it's not really you. Right. Yeah. Not only that, but it addresses that kind of that question that you would have in the show pretty well. So there's like a dad who's like who his wife has already died before this technology came out and he's not interested in being uploaded. He wants to go to what potentially could be real heaven. Mm -hmm. And so his daughter's like trying to convince him like, dad, you need to upload so I can spend the eternity with you in the virtual heaven. And he ain't buying it. He's like, it's just, it's just an arrogance uh, that we have, you know, that we can figure out like every single detail that, that makes up a human being, which, you know, like we've considered all the angles and all the variables. And like, I just don't, I don't believe that personally. I don't think that we'll ever be able to nail down like the essence of, you know, the soul and, and like what actually like, uh, makes a human being a human being. Bro, you, it's so funny that we're on this topic. I just did a post on Instagram, uh, and it's already, of course, it's causing a lot of controversy controversy. And I put in it uh, that anecdotes are not evidence ex- except when they are. And I said, I trust hundreds of years of consistent human anecdote more than a single double blind placebo controlled study. And now that's connected because of exactly what you're saying, Justin, the arrogance that we have now that we've got the scientific method, now that we have technology, we start to discredit all other forms of human wisdom because it's not science. And then take it a step further we start to have this worship of science where if a study says something works, that's unequivocal, it's, that's true. If a study says something's safe, oh, it, it definitely is. And I think that's such a great uh, topic because it, it science is very powerful. It's one of the most amazing tools that we've ever come across, mm-hmm. but it does not replace uh, you know philosophical wisdom, spiritual wisdom. It does not re- replace you know, thousands of years of anecdote, you know, like if an herb has been used for thousands of years for stomach pain, um, that's evidence in my, in my, well, not only that, but, but science tends to do this too, where we try and isolate something where just the human body, the human mind, the the, the human spirit doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Everything's all interconnected. So to try and isolate something to try and prove a point there, you could have something prove in a study that, Oh, that no, that's not true. This does not scientifically do this. Well, what if it did something to that person on a spiritual level, on an emotional level, that then changed the result of whatever reason that they're taking it or doing it? And even though the science doesn't support what the the claims are that people try to make from it, there are other aspects that it could influence because the body doesn't work this way where it isolates things like like studies like to do. So, it, well, it, But yeah. again, it highlights our arrogance where we are like, we know everything. We, we know we figured it out. Oh, yeah. you want to be happy? Okay, we know what that is. That's a bunch of chemicals that makes you feel happy. We know what those chemicals look like. Yeah. Let's just give you those chemicals, and now you're happy. And instead, you get you know uh, the feeling of of happiness, but the lack of meaning. And then you know what we know what that looks like. What you know, drug addiction and, and all that kind of stuff. So you know, I, I think this is a it's a it's a very important uh, conversation. And honestly, I do think that we keep pushing towards this worship of science, we're going to learn that lesson. Well, on that note, do you think in our lifetime that we're going to see like the ability for almost everybody to have everything? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In our our lifetime? I think, oh, I don't know. That's what I'm saying in our lifetime. Of course, I believe we're moving that way. I mean, that's what's happening, right? We're moving in that direction that we're getting better and better 3D printers, things like that. So I, I, I question, will it happen in our lifetime or our children's lifetime where, you know, to have things that everybody works so hard to achieve and obtain, uh, will it be less of a big deal because everybody could pretty much have it? Oh, I think you, you will reach a point if we can make it this far where we'll have everything and then we're going to be left with, now what? And yeah. why do I still feel this way? And oh, what a scary... That is going to be a hard, Inter- scary scary travel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, just, is, yeah, we have to get outside of our world at that point. It's like, you know, we always need something to shoot for. That's just that's just like embedded in uh, the human experience. It's like we want to keep pursuing something that gives us meaning and, and we want to stretch ourselves and we're always trying to build something. It's just inevitable. Yeah. Have you guys been getting DMs about uh, people that are heading back to the gym yet? Like so the, the states that are starting to open up? Yes. In fact, I got an article um, that where 20 for our fitness actually put out some of their 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 guidelines like what they're going to probably open with now of course you want to consider that you know 24 fitness is a large company so they have clubs in many different jurisdictions but generally speaking 
They're going to do touch-free check-ins. There's going to be social distancing throughout all of the gyms with spacing indicators and more, and which which may mean, which probably will mean, that they're going to close certain amenities. Um, they're going to decommission certain certain amounts of cardio and strength equipment because, you know, they fit. The models are to fit X amount of pieces of machine in that model, but if that if they have to distance people, they're probably going to have to get rid of a lot of equipment or decommission it. You know, cover it and say, okay, you're going to be you know over here and you're going to be way over there. Mm-hmm. There's going to be lots of signs. They said personal training probably can continued, but studio classes probably not unless people can be <clears throat> widely distanced from each other. The clubs are going to be open for 60 minutes at a time and then close for 30 minutes after each 60 minutes to be deeply cleaned. God, that, that is, is crazy. That's going to kill. Yeah. That's going to totally I mean, kill them. It's going to put everybody on the hustle right when they get in there. You got to be super efficient in your workout. And then what about like taking your time when having a shower, like doing all these kinds of things? Well, you know, all closed showers yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. All wet, yeah, all wet areas. None are of that's going to work. Yeah, no okay. sauna, no steam, no wow. pool, no, no, no showers, and, just and locker room. Now think about this way. Who are the only people that you can think of that are going to go to a gym that says it's open only at these hours, closed at these hours. So you have to show up at the hour. If you want to get a full workout, you have to deal with the fact that things are spaced out. Who are the only people you can think of Your that are going to show up? fanatical uh, gym bro. That's it. Well, yeah. and, and, and how many of their members are that? Well, and what, yeah. what I'm curious about is Not how, because the way they're doing it to where it's organized is I believe they have apps or ways to sign up for a time. Correct. So they, you know, you, let's just say, you know, based off the square footage and the spacing, they can allow, let, for argument's sake, 150 people in from hours uh, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. So they'll do a app or do some sort of a register ahead of time. And when you have a member base that is massive with thousands of people, Mm-hmm. I would think that people would try and register all their times that they want in there. And then what would end up happening is the reality is a lot of people don't show up, but then you have people that are signed up for that that space. And then what happens to the other you know 900 plus people that weren't able to get into that? Like I, you got to think they cancel their membership. I, I think what they're probably going to do is they're going to uh, have signups, maybe limit how many times you can sign up. And then they'll probably have, you know, where you could show up, you know, you know, when you buy, like you're, you're waiting for a space to open and they're like, look, we have reservations, but if you want, you can wait in case somebody doesn't show up. What a cluster. But it, it, here's oh, what man. I think. I think if this can, may, continues to go, you're going to pay more for times and less for other times, you know, prime time, you know, four, yeah. five, six o'clock at night when everybody's trying to work out, I would assume it's probably going to be expensive. And if you want to work out at like noon or 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. when nobody's in the gym, then you're probably going to be What a less. headache, though, if you're if you're running this, right? Like poor Mark. I mean, we talked about how he's, he's, each county is different, like the rules are. Right. And then to put all these things in place for it to potentially be ripped right back down in, you know, well, six think, months or well, whatever. think about the management. When yeah. you're managing one of these gyms, uh, you know, how much of your time now is going to be dedicated to making sure – Social distancing, yeah. cleaning the gym. Oh, so many people showed up. Sorry, you can't come in. Oh, now we have some space. Like that's a lot of time taken away from marketing, sales, training, development, all that other stuff that you need for successful. Yeah, trying team. to trying to abide by all these rules will definitely shut down a lot of those efforts. Now, every day I I, I go for like a long walk in my neighborhood, and a lot of people I, we talked about this have their garages open, and you see dads like woodworking yeah. and doing stuff. And I don't know if this is, you know, you know, when you buy like a a car and it's a certain color or a model and you're like, I'm the only one that has it. And then you see it all the time. So I don't know if I have that bias right now, but it seems like so many people now have these cool garage gyms. Yeah. I got all these people with their doors open. I walk by and I'm like peering in. I probably look like some creep, especially with the mustache. And I'm staring. (laughs) You're in the bushes. Yeah. Like looking into people's garages and shit like that. So walking by, I forget. I'm like, God, I probably don't. (laughs) Honey, take the kids inside. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Some, Some weird mustache guys <laughs> staring, <laughs> staring in our you guys garage. barbecuing yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the mustachioed guys yeah so i don't know i don't know if it's my my own bias because we've been talking about it we know that the the increase of at-home gyms i don't know if those people had those gyms in their garage you know a year ago and i just happened to see it for the first time but it seems like so many more people are training inside their home or their backyard or whatever now. So it's yeah, going to be interesting how many people just keep doing that. Dude, the equipment has been so scarce. I've seen people actually make uh, out of wood like squat racks, and they've they've tried to like I've seen pull-up fashion bar- things. Pull-up bars done now uh, yeah. with two by fours. I would never even have thought to do that. It's and, such- and kudos to you for you know being inventive. But it's like, come on, like it's it's just crazy to me that that, that it's so scarce right now. Oh, it's cra- this is such a weird time. There was a, I read a story of a lady who owned a hair salon. And and 
she opened it. The cops came and said somebody ratted her out, which is, I think you're a piece of shit. But anyway, she had to close it because they said you can't have any of these non-essential businesses open. And she's like, I have kids. I'm not being, I'm not able to pay my bills. I have other people in here who, who, who pay to use the space so that they could cut people's hair or whatever. Mm -hmm. They have kids. We're not able to pay our mortgages. Some of these people are not eating dinner so they could give food to their kids. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm staying open. Yeah. And so she was, she, they, they sent her to jail. Well, are so I, she went to court and believe it or not, in all places, Texas. That, okay. So I was just going to bring up oh, a Texas. So someone bullshit. in our forum, uh, Rance, he has a, he went to a gym just the other morning, I guess that opened up even though they're not supposed to. And he said that cops were in there, uh, chasing everybody out. Yeah, dude. dude. This is a weird time because, it, it, you know, I get it, but you got to be very careful because, I, I mean, how can you how can you throw someone in jail who, it, they're not stealing. What they're trying to do is support and pay for and take care of their family. And the people going to see her and her herself, they're the ones willingly taking their own lives yeah. at risk. And I get the whole, like, we don't want it to spread around the community, but man, that's a weird T difficult Did, position. And weren't we releasing prisoners to here California in California? Is. They just they're releasing sex offenders and shit. I saw your meme about oh, that. Oh my god. god! Talk about a oh, backwards idea. Oh, and by idea. the way, three of them, three of the sex offenders that they got released, uh, each one of them went back because they either did something else, terrible, yeah. terrible crime because they released. Them. Oh no way! Yes. What? Yeah. Did you see the thread that I was in on our forum going back and forth with somebody who's in real estate that was saying that the claims that are going around about real estate being hurt right now and stuff isn't true and. I was trying to say that that's what I'm I'm most interested to watch because of all the uh, the forgiveness on the mortgages and the moratorium on foreclosures. Sure. And he was like debating with me that oh that's that's just the the small or the, the the small handful of states that have those things going on like California. I'm like California is like fucking uh, our economy is bigger it's than most country state. most countries. Yeah. <laughs> so if we go down, the whole country gets hurt, bro. You yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. that's the thirty. Just so you know, that's the thirty first of this month. So the 31st of this month, they pull that moratorium. Wow. So as of right now, there's tons of people that are not paying rent and not paying mortgages, and we're not seeing the the repercussions of that yet. Now, wow. you can see small indicators, what we've been watching with Redfin and, and, and Zillow. We're seeing the houses like just get priced more aggressive, more aggressive, and more and more of them hitting the market. But man, watch what happens at the end of this month when they pull that moratorium and all the people that own a lot of these houses that haven't been collecting their rent from renters that aren't paying start kicking all these people well, out. There's, there's over 30 million yeah, uh, jobless crazy. claims. 30 million. Yeah, over 30 million. And they and it keeps climbing. It's getting crazy. I was having a conversation. It, with, that's higher than, well, That's higher than Great Depression numbers, right? Percentage-wise? Yeah, it's. I don't know if it is more percentage-wise, it, but it's, it's the highest we've ever, I think, that we've recorded. Now, during the Great Depression, they didn't record necessarily numbers and stuff. They were, they're, they're all estimates. But I think since we really started paying attention to the numbers, I think it's one of the highest ever that we've ever experienced. Do you know that, Doug? Do you, are, you, are you looking the stats up right now on that? I, yeah. I thought I heard that. I thought I heard that we were on pace right now, yeah. percentage-wise. Obviously, a lot more people today than there was. Yeah. And the difference is that that was caused by you know uh, terrible market signals. This is caused by laws. Yeah. Like you know, and there's a there's a there's a virus that's out there, but most of it's been caused by laws that say, you know, you can't open. It's funny. I was having this conversation with uh, a friend of mine who is a, a, a also a son of immigrants, and we were talking about. Um, so I, I watched. You know, there's that that Milton Friedman series, Free to Choose, and I, every once in a while I'll watch it. And there was, I think it was the second episode. By the way, if you're into this kind of stuff, it's an old series, but it's on YouTube and it's absolutely it's brilliant. Great. And there was a, a, a one of the episodes was showing all the immigrants that were coming in, you know, out in the early, you know, 1900s. And I'm watching that, and I, and, you know, I'm I'm remembering that in those days there were really no, there was no, there were no laws of immigration laws. Like if you came here, you were here, and you were on your own, but you were free to to, to build your life and do what you wanted. And most of the immigrants came from Europe and. It's funny, I was talking with my friend, and he goes, you know, when I bring that up to people, people say, oh, they were all Europeans, that's why it worked so well, and everybody got along. And I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I ever heard. Europe, especially back then, was so, each country was so, I mean, they went to war, it was world wars two times amongst European nations. So to, to assume that just because, you know, Germans, Italians, and Irish are coming, oh, they're all European, therefore they're all going to get along, that's the stupidest thing ever heard. The reason why they all got along is because all of them had the same idea when they came here, which was, I, right, you don't bother me. I don't bother you. I'm here to, I value the freedom 
to yeah. pursue my interests. And if we work together, great. And if not, then we leave each other alone. And that's what made it work. And so there's still that, that I think, a little bit of that vein left in this country, which is why I think you see people protesting and saying, hey, you know, I want to I, I want to take that risk and I want to be open. Now, are you are you and Justin both still, is it still homeschooling right now? What's going on with that? Yeah, yeah. they're not opening till the end of, uh, till next year. And when, when is school mm-hmm. like in for you guys and what's that well, looking like? I, I'm pretty sure it's it's in August, like uh, the, like the f- mid-August is when they're going to reopen the schools and kind of bring everybody back as far as we know. Uh, and I had mentioned that they were trying to look into <laughs> Even like Gavin Newsom was trying to make it so like during you know the summer the the kids would come back so just in case the the pandemic sort of mm-hmm. came back and they had to go through the skin, which to 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 our benefit thankfully that they ruled against that so they're doing August um, because it's like okay so we figured out how to do this at home so now if it does happen again and you know there's a resurgence of this it's like okay well we've dealt with this we kind of know what this looks like so i guess it'll be at home have you guys seen some of the latest polls on on this topic no so so some of the latest polls are showing that 52 percent of people now have a positive uh uh, they 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 think positively of homeschooling and are, are maybe considering it yeah so this could very much this situation could very much uh cause way more parents to say you know what I could see that. I, I I prefer homeschooling to the the system where I send them. To I public. think it's it's bumpy at first, right? Just like anything. I mean, it, it, it's creating and establishing uh, what that looks like with the ritual of like I'm getting up, I, I'm productive in between these hours. They have enough, you know, free time here. Like you just got, you have to kind of. Uh, feel that out between mm. whoever's like you know whoever's watching the kids and 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 what the kids are how they stay focused. Now you both have had a good experience though with your your schools as far as like because I would think that would make a big difference for as a parent right now is you know do you have a a good school system that's providing direction and support for you guys versus maybe some that don't like I don't know have you heard any of your friends or any other people that may not be experiencing like because you guys seem to have worked out a system and you like yeah I, I don't think I, what I don't think is I don't think you're gonna see more people homeschool than send it to, to send kids to school but you're gonna see a larger percentage than you maybe have before I mean the poll literally says well, it's not what that would mean that, well no more than they did before so let's say that there was let's say five percent of kids are being homeschooled before okay. this happened okay. you're probably gonna see it go up right uh, pretty significantly like the stu- the, the the poll actually says that 52 percent of parents now have a more favorable opinion of homeschooling. That's a big, that's a very, very big jump. It's, I was having this conversation with my son. We were going on a walk and he's like, you know, he goes, the school system's kind of not smart. I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, why? It's exposing a lot, he goes, isn't it? He goes, I get when they teach you all these general things, but after a certain point, he goes, the modern, and I'm, you know, this makes me, my kid talks like this. I go, I want to cry, you know? He goes, you know, the, he goes, the modern workforce is very, very heavily based around specialization. Like, most people's jobs don't include lot, like a lot, doing a lot of different things. He said most jobs are you do one or two things really, really well. Mm-hmm. He goes, it makes no sense. He said what they should do is if a kid is good at like math and science and he learns like really, you know, kind of some basic history and stuff like why don't they devote all their time on math and science since that's what the modern workforce looks like or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And I said, yeah, I said, you're totally, yeah. you're totally right. <laughs> that makes way too much sense. Yeah. And uh, that's what home, that's homeschooling. If you, there are ways you could do that where you, you focus your child's education on the special, on you, what you see their talents and their interests are. Right. And you probably were produced. Well, uh, Domenico for president 2050. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Un- <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> not, with, not with my big mouth. <laughs> First question is from Zach DP. How detrimental is alcohol to weight training? How much is too much? You know, this is a a very common question as a trainer that we get all the time, right? Do you guys do you guys remember getting this all the time from clients? Like, you know, I have this goal, but how do I how do I? I can't get past this porn <laughs> name. I'm sorry. I have to I have to point out the elephant in the room. <laughs> Zach DP, come on, guy. That's, right. a, that's a, it's probably not what it means, but it's fine. Yeah, let's let's move on. We're like we're like, yeah. we're like I'm like a little kid, dude. We're like kids over here, can't yeah. focus. All right, <laughs> sorry. You guys are fucking with me. I'm like, what what do I not know yeah. right now? <laughs> shake it out, shake it out. <laughs> yeah, all right. no, all the time. I would get clients and people ask. 
asking me about, oh, I used to get this one a lot, like, um, you know, oh, uh, you know, I definitely want to lose weight, this and that, but make sure that, you know, I have five glasses of wine a week. No, I used How to many get, less calories? I had clients that yeah. would say that was their that was their thing was like, listen, uh, I'll do whatever yeah. you tell me to, but I'm Anything not- Anything but the wine. Yeah, I'm not giving up my wine yeah. at night or I'm not giving up my, my scotch or whatever it is. And it's like, you know- uh, it, 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 I, I don't know if I I've, I don't know if I've even figured out or the the best way to answer this to clients, but I I do know this like if you have that attitude of, you know that you need to be drinking or you have to be drinking, normally that person is not very successful at at, at achieving their fitness goals. Yeah, it's not to say that there are not people that have found ways to integrate alcohol into their lifestyle and still maintain it. It's, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is the people that come in- they have that attitude. That, yeah, exactly. That yes. have that attitude from the gates that say, I'm not willing to give X up or I'm not giving these days up and how do I figure out a plan mm -hmm. to integrate that? If you come in with that, 99% uh, of those people failed at getting to their goal. Now, if you were open to, hey, I can totally get rid of it, whatever it takes to figure out or get to my goal. And then hopefully one day I can start to integrate it into my lifestyle. Those people have some success. Yeah. Well, it's always, yeah, it's, I mean, it may not have that big of an, an effect overall, but like I've noticed training people, it's always like one thing. It's, it's that one thing that is on that list of like untouchables. Like we, yeah, everything but this. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, give up, uh, that those snacks because I, I live and die for those every day when in fact, like that was the one key that if we finally addressed that like a couple years later, like they're finally okay to do that and then they had like yeah. this crazy transformation yeah it's not even it's not even necessarily the alcohol itself i think it's the attitude because i will say that look for the most part for the most part alcohol consumption is going to reduce your body's ability to build muscle burn body fat adapt all that other stuff now there are small uh there's a small percentage of times when some alcohol is going to actually be better for your health now i'm not talking about the physical physiological uh health benefits of alcohol. There's some studies that suggest maybe there's some of that. I don't believe that. What I think what I think is if you use alcohol occasionally because you're connecting with friends and family, it's part of a religious ceremony, it's something that you're doing with your spouse and you're enjoying uh, you know, it's your it's your anniversary, that is good for a segment of your health which then can contribute to general overall health. But that being said, physically speaking, um, there's no benefit uh, from alcohol, and when it comes to building muscle, it's mostly yeah. detriment. Well, I, I look at the, there's a there's a few reasons for this, and one of the reasons is um, it's completely empty calories. It's just it's not there's, there's no benefit. There is no benefit for it towards you burning more body fat or building more muscle. And the reality is that most people don't get enough of what they need as it is. Right? How often did you guys ever evaluate a diet and go, man, you hit all your macro targets? That's great. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. You never did. In fact, we always we always advocate for before you take anything away from anybody's diet, no matter how shitty their diet is, is to start to add things into the diet that they need. So, if you already are lacking in nutrients and then you're adding something that's taking up potentially 200 to 500 calories, depending on how much alcohol you're drinking, you make it really, really difficult to get what your body needs, and then you add in the behavioral things that happen with it. Normally when you drink, you have a tendency to want to eat foods that are also not uh, as advantageous for your goals. Right. And then the after effect of the next day. The next day, a lot of times, I feel like trash because of how because I drank and I was in ingesting something that didn't serve my body. And then the motivation that I lacked mm -hmm. to, to exercise the next day. You know, day. it's funny too. Yeah. The more, the harder you have challenges with food, the more you have to willingly prevent yourself from binging or overeating, the more likely you are to do those things when you drink alcohol because alcohol is a classic, it, it, it classically reduces inhibitions. This is why the jokes about sleeping with people, you know, that you normally wouldn't when you're drunk or, oh, I did that crazy thing or I, I did karaoke when normally I wouldn't go up and sing on stage. It lowers your inhibitions. And so if you have this relatively, if you don't have a great relationship with food and if it's always kind of a struggle, you're probably more likely to eat really crappy food when you drink alcohol because it lowers inhibitions and now you feel like, hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop myself anymore. I'm going to do whatever I want or whatever. So it tends to do that. I'll tell you this. Okay. That all being said, okay. If you have a healthy relationship with alcohol, you're using it appropriately. It's not an abuse or whatever. 
one thing you could do is you can you can really mitigate a lot of the negative effects from it by chain by by kind of manipulating how you use it. And one of the biggest things you could do, one of the most important things you could do is not drink late at night. That is a big one because what you're doing by drinking late at night is not only are you drinking alcohol, but now you're interfering with sleep. So now you've just doubled all the damage. I learned this as an adult. I, mean, I was like when I was younger and we'd go out drinking and be at night and then I come home and you have crappy sleep and whatever and then you wake up and you feel like and I, I remember as an adult, you know, when you're an adult, you kind of be like, "Hey, let's go uh let's go hang out, you know, it's noon, let's go to a bar or whatever." And then you drink during the day and then you, you know, 5 6 o'clock rolls around, you stop drinking, you sober up a little bit, and then your sleep is a little bit better. You, so that's one thing yeah, you Yeah, no, do. sleep is terrible for sleep. And I and I think um there there's a high majority of people that use alcohol after work as as a way to cut the edge off and to to kind of relax and it's sort of like it becomes a, a bit of a ritual, even if it's just one or two glasses, you know, which then can kind of, uh, you know, can, you can compile later. Like you could start, you know, that that could be the start to that. Um, but, you know, like looking at that as like a potential, th th this could become a habit that you form. Like this is my go to to relax. And so that's the behavior side of that, uh, you know, that I always like try to pay attention to. And it's not it's not benefiting you uh, in terms of any. Anything else like it's going to take away from your sleep it's going to take away from your performance in the gym so i i try to look at alcohol as something that i use as a treat so it's like a like i'm looking forward to it you know i'm going to go and i'm going to hang out with my friends i'm going to celebrate something like like that's where i want to use alcohol now we we all uh, openly admit to to having an occasional drink in fact we we partnered with a company like z biotic do you think sal that the, the what is what makes the z biotic so impactful is the fact that it helps with the sleep? Do you okay. think that's what a majority? Because I, that's what I notice when I use that. Right, I don't drink that. It's often. not a sleep aid, uh, so it's not that it makes you sleep better. It's a, it's a, it's a genetically engineered bacteria that produces an enzyme that breaks down a a negative byproduct or buildup that's caused from alcohol metabolism called uh, acetaldehyde. And what this stuff does is it, it builds up, and typically your liver creates the enzyme that can destroy it or, or can break it down. But what happens when you drink alcohol is you build up more than you can break down. So you get this over, you get this buildup of this byproduct of alcohol. And what are the symptoms of uh, acetaldehyde buildup? Um, inflammation, uh, headaches, la you know, terrible sleep, bad gut, your gut is thr thrown, all the stuff that we would classically label as a, a hangover. So uh, Ziba, and look, I'll tell you what right now, when I, when this company, we, I initially heard about this company through an article that I read about this product and how the author tested it and other people tested it and thought it was amazing. I talked about it on the podcast, the company heard that we had talked about it and contacted us and sent us some samples. And I was extremely skeptical. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Let's see if this actually works. It is eerie. It is eerie how well that it works. I mean, we even did a video where mm -hmm. Adam, Justin, uh, myself, and Doug played a drinking game, and mm -hmm. like idiots, we modified the rules thinking it would be better. In reality, what we, we went did to is, the absolute extreme. We it, yeah, we was dumb. It was very what we did was irresponsible. We went way too far. I had never been that drunk. I don't think I've been that drunk in ten years or longer. And we did, but we did the Zbiotics, and the next day. Normally, the way I would feel would be like I need to stay home from work, sick, like really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Instead, I felt like a little tired. I didn't. I noticed I didn't feel, and it, and it had to be because. And I've used ever since then. I've used Zbiotics a few other times. So you know, I said drinking during the day instead of at night. Zbiotics is the first product I would say is one way you can mitigate some of the negatives, especially if, if fitness and health is a priority for you. You know, drink that. Then have your drinks, and you're probably you're going to notice a difference. But to Justin's point, the the thing that you have to, and this just takes self awareness on on you. If you are the person who it, it's become a behavior or a habit, or you if you, it triggers you to say you can't have it or you shouldn't have it, and you have a problem with saying, hey, you know, I can go, you know, weeks or months without having alcohol in my life. There's an issue there, and I mean, I don't care if it's if it's we're talking about alcohol right now, but it could be talking about anything. We've talked about this mm -hmm. before. If you have a problem, it has control over you. You don't have control over right. it. Yeah. Next question is from Joey Dominic forty one. I'm about to finish Maps Anabolic and am feeling great. 
I want to start MAPS Aesthetic. Should I take any time off in between? No, oh, it's perfect progression. You know, the, the programs, we design the programs like personal trainers first. Uh, we did not design the programs like marketers first. So, so let me explain, right? When we created these workout programs, the goal, the idea was to think about how, what would the average person need and then how would we progress them? Because working out and training your body is a lifelong pursuit. And through that lifelong pursuit, you learn what works for your body. You learn how to apply certain principles, how they work for you. You learn how to manipulate them and use them. You figure out how to use the tool of resistance training appropriately. And through that process means, if you want to really go through that process, means you work out many different ways with other goals in mind. And so our programs are meant to be followed one after another. MAPS Anabolic is a very good foundational strength and muscle building program. Like it's a very, very good, solid foundational program for strength and for muscle building. MAPS Aesthetic is like MAPS Anabolic, just much more advanced. So if you've done MAPS Anabolic and you've followed the program two or three times and you're ready for more volume, more work, next level, more of a bodybuilding spin to your program, then you go more, then you go MAPS uh, Aesthetic. But all of them are designed to be able to follow one. Yeah, we another. wrote, a, you did a thing where I think uh, Rachel saved it on the highlights on the main page. So we get a question, and I wanted, that's why I wanted to pick this question is so we could share on the podcast because I don't think we have, and we get questions like this a lot, especially when I do my q and I answer a lot of these mm -hmm. questions. And she, uh, well, Sal sat down and wrote out, you know, the way we created them, the the natural progression from program to program, or if you have specific goals, like ideally, what programs would you couple together in what order? And so if you go to the, the Mind Pump Media IG and you look at the saved highlights, um, the saved stories or whatever, uh, there's a, a whole bunch of different examples of whatever your goal may be, what programs would fit best, or if you are planning on going through all of them, what is the consecutive order that you should follow? Right. Now, I will say this for people listening. Uh, one of the best things you could do for your fitness is to sit down and write out and construct yourself a workout. And every two to four months, change your workout and the change isn't just exercises that's part of it but the change should be uh, go uh, your goal your target goal so if your target goal for the for this three you know months is you know maximum strength in 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 the three lifts the bench press squat and deadlift all right you design your program around that then the next program you you create for yourself after that three months is over might be okay now i'm looking more for athletic performance maybe some better mobility. I'll do that for the next three months. And then after that, you could say, okay, I think I'm going to train now more like a bodybuilder. I'm going to sculpt my body. And and that what that produces over time is a is superior results and a great balanced physique. Because one of the one of the ways you plateau is by do, hammering the same goal over mm -hmm. and over without changing a little bit. And we, we wrote the programs with the same concept of how we would train clients towards the end of our career, right? The beginning of our career, I think we we, we fell into a lot of similar things that other totally. personal trainers, but it is it is a culmination of all three of ours experience. And when we wrote it, we wrote it with in mind thinking that the idea is to give not only take you through something, but also give you the tools to where you can create a program. So Probably the most common thing that people buy is our, our RGB, which is the you know MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic bundle that we have together. And the idea is that is to take you through about a year's worth of training on how we would transition and phase you through right. all the different types of mo modalities, regardless of what your goal is, and it'd be most beneficial. Most people that have gone all the way through all three of those get the concept of how you now put together your own program. It takes a lot for the consumer to, to trust, you, you know, put their trust out there to do something that's uncomfortable and they're unfamiliar with. And so, again, yeah, we, we try to, to write something that, you know, would, would first and foremost would appeal to what your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish, but also introduce you to new concepts, new ideas, new ways of moving your body that will even, you know, take you even further. So you'll never reach that plateau period where it's like, man, I'm just not getting the kind of results I was getting before. We try and take you along that journey. So you just keep going and, and keep moving forward. Next question is from Nathaniel L. Watson. How do you turn your focus on how you feel instead of how you look? Oh. Well, there's, okay, there's two ways that this will happen for you. So if you are very, very, very focused 
on how you look, and that's really your main driver. Throw away uh, the mirror for working out, and that's your main driver for working out. You're not going to move out of that space unless you're forced to. So what I mean by that is your health suffers. Uh, your looks suffer terribly because your health is suffering. You've got terrible digestive issues or acne or injuries. And, you know, and I've, I've talked to many people like this where they were just so focused on how they look. And at some point everything fell apart. And then they were like, you know, you, you kind of, you hit your knees and you're like, all right, I give in. I'm going to focus on my health and how I feel. Here's the other way you can do that. If you don't want to reach that point. Okay. The other way you can do that is, yeah, you could definitely change your completely shift your paradigm. Good luck with that. That's definitely the great way to do it. it takes a lot of work. Or you could do this. Uh, you could sell yourself a little bit. And this is how I'm going to sell you right now on, on why you should change this. If you focus on your looks, if that's what drives you with your workouts and nutrition, you will eventually have health consequences. When your health is poor, your looks suffer. So if you focus on your looks, the end result is you get terrible looks. If you focus on how you feel in your health, the side effect of that is looking great. And if you always focus on your health, then you will always have a greater, uh, a good deal of good health. And because again, because of that, you'll have better looks. So this is how you sell yourself. I want the best looks. I'm going to focus on how I feel because that produces the best looks. That's the secret. And again, if you don't do that, at some point, uh, you will get forced uh, to move in that direction. I think this is a, a lifelong pursuit. I really do. Uh, you know, we talk about it at, at nauseum on this podcast, and I still find myself, still to this day, being challenged in that area. I don't, I don't know if it will ever end for me, especially if it's something that is a, a deeply rooted insecurity. If it was what drove me into this space in the first place was to train because I felt like I was a skinny guy more than likely most of my fitness life i'm going to be challenged with that totally. one way or another in fact yesterday i was uh texting back and forth uh with mark bell he had reached out to me just asking me how things uh, were going. that guy really likes you <laughs> yeah he does he he's, he's a big fan yeah, especially send, your new mustache sends me nudes all the yeah. time i don't know what's that <laughs> thanks buddy uh so he uh he's, he's he's texting me back and forth we're talking about fatherhood and then he asked me about my training, you know, how's, how's your training and how's, how's the gym going and stuff. And I said, you know, I, I've, I've reframed my goals right now. I said, um, you know, by no means am I, uh, the Im impressive men's physique athlete right now at all. Uh, and I know that part of that process, I know I'm directly challenging my own insecurities to do that. Like, and I said to him, I said, you know, right now it's about uh, having energy to uh, when I come home to be able to play with my son, to have good rest as much as I possibly can, to be, feel mobile so that I don't get my back doesn't give out on me when I'm holding him or when I'm down low playing with him. So I've focused on those things right now. So I said on a bad week. You know, I may get one or two like strength training sessions, but uh, coupled with two or three days of mobility and tons of long walks right now that I spend with Katrina and Max. And I mean, I can't tell you how good I feel about my overall health right now and my relationship with my partner, my son, all these other aspects that I think are important when you talk about your overall health journey. But when you look at me, I don't look anywhere impressive. In fact, it's the average person that you know may have dropped in on my Instagram a couple of years ago, then drops in now, would go, "Oh my God, what's happened, to Adam?" Or he's fallen off. And it's like, no, I just I've I've shifted my focus of a, a look, and it's more about other aspects of my journey. But it doesn't mean that that's not challenging. I mean, it's totally it's still something that I have, and part of me doing that is is letting go of that and challenging those versus trying to hold on to oh my god I used to look this way or throwing back pictures of what I used to look like on posting on Instagram to fit, make myself feel better about myself it's like no instead I'm going to embrace the physique that I have right now because by no means is it bad it's just that it's my insecurities yeah. that make me think that way because it's still as healthy or healthier today than it was five years We've ago. We've just seen what that mentality does. It, you know, it, it's that it, it it ends up being that on the wagon, off the wagon, vicious cycle that you, you tend to go through because it, it's really hard to live up to uh, twenty year old me. 
Yeah. You know, I just can't. I would love to go back and have that same physique and those abilities and that you know that that strength and 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 and, and all those those attributes that I I looked back fondly at. But um, to to be able to focus on new things, I mean, it is hard. It's something that you have to constantly just focus on one aspect of that and, and try to adopt that going mm. forward and make that become something that you do so frequently. It's just it becomes part of 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 your lifestyle. And I mean, it's pretty cliche to say that, but it's, it has to be that it has to be something that you incorporate into. This is what I do now forever. It's not something that, you know, I want to just hustle to get there and then back off and then hustle. And and then once I get there look at me, but guess what? You look at me and then what you you go right back to old patterns and you start this whole thing all up again. So to, to be able to just incorporate one thing at a time, you know, add on to that with uh, once you once you build off of that is so much of a better strategy. Yeah, well, it's, you, it's a long term strategy. Yeah, when you think when I think of uh, overall health, there there's so many things that encompass that, and there's going to be times. And 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 here's the thing too: it's I don't think that it's fair or right to to demonize wanting to look good. You know, if you want to look good and be ripped and fit. I don't think that there's some value to no, that, right? I don't think there's I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. You just have to be no, careful. You celebrate it. You just have to be careful not to identify with that, right? right? Because it's only one part of the whole big picture. It's also a road to destruction if right. you're obsessed with that and that becomes your only. And you know what's funny about this is that, you know, and I, I remember learning this years ago. I went to my first like physique, you know, bikini competitor competition years ago. I had a friend that was competing in it, and he was a he was a natural bodybuilder. And I remember walking in and seeing some of these athletes in real life, and they were shredded and dieted and whatever. None of them actually in real life looked attractive. By by the way, attractive, the the actual real definition of the term where you you see someone, you're like, wow, that's a a magnetic individual. They all looked terribly unhealthy, bad skin. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a represent, they didn't look healthy. And here's the thing, healthy people, really healthy people, I mean, inside and out, are attractive to other healthy people. Unhealthy people are the ones that are attractive to other unhealthy people. Like you got the the roided out, you know, insecure dude who tends to attract the uh, the plastic surgery, extreme diet person and their their unhealthiness attracts each other. Real attractiveness comes from being truly healthy, okay? And that's a that's a good lifelong pursuit because I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't care who you are, you're going to get older if you're lucky. You're going to get older one day, Mm -hmm. and it's all going to fall apart anyway. So either you learn the lesson now or you learn the hard lesson later on, but at some point you're going to learn this lesson. Next question is from KJ Biggs. If I were to open up your fridge and pantry, what would I see? What are the staples? (laughs) Oh, that's great. All right. So, do, do you guys have like certain staples that are always in your refrigerator? Yeah. So I have. I'll have Blocks like of cheese. Quote. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> two all, drawers. That's, that's all that's it is. About yeah, it. Two yeah. Dra- yeah. And that is not an exaggeration or a lie because when we go up to Tahoe, that's well, exactly that one time. It, yeah, yeah, we went to I Tahoe. Exposed my true self. I opened up one of our drawers and I'm like, "There's every fucking kind of cheese in this drawer right now." Like, <laughs> dude, there was a shortage. I had to make sure that I was covered. <laughs> yeah. Cheese, hey man, if you could tolerate it, cheese is actually not bad at all. It's good for uh, you. Yeah. And, and so in my fridge, I'll have stuff that the kids can eat. So. I'll have cheese. Uh, I like I like that as a snack for kids, yeah. especially if they can tolerate olives because my my daughter loves to snack um, on olives. I'll have some kind of vegetables that we're gonna make uh, for the day. Milk uh, for the kids in, in the morning. Uh, I'm trying to think what else are staples. I'll have bacon. Uh, um, I'll have meat that's been defrosted. That'll mm-hmm. probably be made for that day, or fish or something like that. Um, what else is a is a is a staple in the fridge? Not pantry. I'll have cans of tuna fish. That's a good, easy source of, uh, of protein. We'll have all the spices and stuff that you can use. We'll have some lemons. Typically, I'll use those in cooking. Uh, maybe some fruit. Some fresh fruit will be in there. And rarely will we have uh, something that would be like a a cookie mix or something that we're going to make cookies with the kids or something like that. Yeah. I mean, pretty similar. We, we have like our freezer is filled with meat, like constantly. And then you go to defrost whatever is going to be, uh, you know, dinner that, that night we'll, we'll put in the fridge and, or on the counter and uh, besides that, I mean, it's, it's cheese. It's, it's, it's deli meat. It's um, uh, like yogurts too. So we'll, oh, yeah, we'll do some one. Greek yogurt is, is a good snack and stuff like that for the kids. Um, 
And uh, other than that, uh, for the most part, we try and get uh, a lot of the freshness. This is one thing I really uh, respect about Courtney and like her uh, cooking. She she really tries to to maintain as much uh, fresh produce as possible, and so we do this. Uh, you know, this, I always forget the name of it, uh, by the way, but it's, it's, it's like this community thing where you get a box of, of vegetables and fruit from a local farmer. And so we go pick that up, uh, the beginning of the week and we try and use it all up before it all, uh, rots right in front of us. So, uh, that's been a great, uh, uh, you know, addition to, uh, all of our diets for sure. So I'll, I'll take you through my refrigerator. Uh, and we have a lot of magic spoon. Yes, yeah, <laughs> shelf by <laughs> shelf, uh, because I would say it, it looks pretty similar to what it is uh, right now is what it normally always is. Uh, the top shelf is uh, the different types of, of uh, milk, like so almond milk and uh, coconut milk next to Max's milk, breast milk. So that's don't mix them up. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's a, <laughs> that's the top shelf. Uh, then underneath that is normally a bunch of things of Tupperware, which is always uh, leftovers. We always tend to cook in bulk. Uh, and next to that is all of uh, Max's food. So Katrina, when she meal preps for us, she meal preps also for uh, Max's food, all his uh, mixes for the week. And that's normally things like broccoli and you know uh, broccoli and blueberries. I think was yesterday and. You know, avo- uh, avocado and uh, you know uh, chicken, and she she blends it all up and makes this baby food. So that's next to that. Uh, underneath that shelf is uh, where the eggs are all at, and then the overflow of veggies because we have uh, we have a veggie drawer, but we probably have more veggies and fruit than anything else in our refrigerator. Like probably Justin and Sal, uh, we we tend to have tons of that. There's always a massive broccoli head in there. There's always a huge bag or multiple bags of Brussels sprouts. I eat a lot of Brussels sprouts uh, and normally a few heads of asparagus uh, that are in there. And then the bottom drawer is whatever meat that I've taken out of the freezer. So we have a freezer in the garage, one of the big deep freezers that is full to the brim of mostly butcher box meat um, that's in there. And I'll normally pull out. It goes into the bottom drawer. I know that's what I'm either prepping and cooking on the barbecue or Katrina is using the uh, Instapot or the air fryer. We use that all the time. And then as far as pantry stuff, we really don't have a lot of boxed can type foods. Um, like Justin, I have ma- my Magic Spoon is on the counter. That's my one treat. Uh, I, I, I'm the type of person, um, could, this is different than Katrina. If it was up to Katrina, our house wouldn't look like this. Thank God she was okay uh, with, with being this way because she recognizes this about me is I'm really good uh, by not keeping things in the house. Like I won't eat it. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't crave chips that bad. I don't even need ice cream, candy. All the even with my sweet tooth, I will not like get up out of my out of my couch and go drive to get something like that. And so by keeping it out of the cupboards, I know that I won't go dive into it because I have I a really same thing. I have a really bad habit of like I can't. She can do this right. She can go have two chips. Or she can go have two M and M's. How I know, I know, dude, that's crazy. She can do that. She can grab. She can buy a, a like a, a you know a, you know a king size bag of peanut M and M's. Put it in the freezer, and she it'll last a month. You know, if her just like one impossible. Or, yeah, that, I'm and it, eat those. And that's not me. Like I will whatever it is. If it's a treat, I will eat the whole thing if I do it. And and I'll most know, people are like that. I I feel that I know I can't be alone in this, right? Oh. And I know that I choose those types of foods when I'm Netflixing and chilling, right, at night. And it's it has that. And I know this about myself that I have these behaviors. And one of the best ways for me to break those is to buy not allow it into the house. So I think. That's why we keep those. So if I'm really craving something, I got to go in the refrigerator and get creative with the whole foods that we have. That's actually yeah. a great. Um, yeah. I mean, that's what I, that's how I coach my clients. I'd say don't if if you if there are foods that are treats and things that you think you want to have seldomly, don't keep them in the house. Create create the barrier to where if you need it, you have to go drive to the store yeah. and get yourself a single serving because if it's there and it's present and it's that accessible, the odds are you'll be stressed, tired, watching something. Maybe you had a little bit of wine, whatever. You're going to go and grab it and then eat more of it than you. We than do it. Yeah. And I'm not trying to hide the fact that I do have some vices. Like, there's, we do drink and, you know, occasionally. And then also, like, uh, like chips make their way in and out of our house quite yeah. often. Yeah. We always have, too, uh, on that second shelf of, it, I always have a massive thing of uh, rice that we had pre cooked. We're always cooking rice. Rice is like, the, the staple pair with every meat that we have. So yeah. it's like a go-to. 
Uh, I do mix in, of course, sweet potatoes and yams, things like that, uh, and regular potatoes. But the go-to is almost always there is a rice and a green in there that we have either cooked from the night before or have to cook that day, and then whatever meat that we're mixing. And I, I have fallen in love, Katrina, too, with the Instapot. The Instapot has been like a savior for us. It's just, it's so, once you learn how to use it, I think that's what most people complain about is just all the buttons and gadgets on it. But once you figure it all out, it, beep, coo- beep, beep. it, it cooks it cooks dishes so amazing and you can kind of like throw everything in it and then it makes it so quick too and it's easy clean. So that's been a staple for us. Excellent. Go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our, our guides, resources, and books. You can also find your favorite podcast hosts on Instagram, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and also our producer Doug is also on Instagram. You can go to uh, Mind Pump Doug. Make sure you sign up for his fans only page. Yeah.